Welcome to day seven of my 30 day security challenge. It's the month long challenge I created to help you gain control of your privacy and security online. You can follow along with the security challenge via my blog at snubsy.com where you can skip ahead if you want to and you can download a checklist of the challenge. Each of these videos will also be curated into a playlist so it'll be really easy to follow along from day one all the way through day 30 here on YouTube. We are gonna have a little chat about antivirus and malware detection tools today. So viruses and malware are those little bits of code that could be installed on your computer without you knowing. They could wreak havoc on your machine or spy on you secretly and send data back to an attacker. It's a worrying scenario and one to be mindful of. For the longest time, antivirus has been a big thing for the Windows crowd, but lately, that has kind of changed. Many information security professionals nowadays will tell you that you don't need antivirus on your machine because the free ones will slow your computer down or they just aren't updated fast enough to deal with the newest malware being distributed. I would have to agree with them, but you have to follow the rest of my 30 day security challenge to really make me feel comfortable recommending that. If you don't feel comfortable turning off your antivirus and just depending on your own good internet hygiene, you should absolutely leave it on. There's many antivirus security and software suites to choose from. I like Avast for the folks in my family, but whichever one you choose, just ensure that automatic updating is turned on and make sure that it is set to do a scheduled scan as often as possible. I usually set them to run every night after the user goes to sleep. Now, if you have a newer Windows machine, you could also turn on Windows Defender, which is a built-in antivirus straight from Microsoft, the creators of Windows. If you use Windows Defender, you do not need to install another antivirus software app. So to turn this on, you click on Start, Settings, Update and Security, Windows Defender, then Enable it. Windows Defender is probably the best option if you don't want to download a third-party antivirus. It's already built in, it doesn't slow down your computer, and it updates almost daily. Now, if you choose to not have an antivirus software on your machine, I would still recommend doing quick scans now and then. You can do this with Microsoft Safety Scanner. The link is down there in the show notes. It asks you if you are downloading it for 32-bit or 64-bit computers. So just to find out, you go to Start, Settings, System, about and then look for 32-bit or 64-bit. It's most likely 64-bit, but just in case. Now, if you've ever had a feeling that your computer has been infected before with malware, you can run Malware Bytes for Windows. The link is in the show notes to this download as well, and then you can scan your computer whenever you want to make sure it's not infected. You don't have to buy it. The trial version is free. Just use the free version unless you really think that you might get malware, then you might want to purchase it. Moving on to Macs. Many experts in the field will say that you do not need antivirus software on a Mac computer. It is harder for a Mac to be hacked due to its underlying technical aspects. The fact that it runs on a Unix-based platform allows it to be a sandboxed operating system, which means that it's more firewalled, in a sense, than a regular Windows machine. But this doesn't mean that Mac malware or viruses do not exist. While not as popular as Windows malware, they definitely do pop up now and then, and using proper internet hygiene can save you a lot of headache. More on that in a future video as well. Now, however, there are antivirus available for Mac machines, free or otherwise. Avast, like I mentioned earlier, offers a free antivirus, and Bitdefender offers a purchased one. There are many others to choose from as well, in case you have a different preference. Now with any of these, you may experience a slight slowdown in performance of your machine, but you should also set up scheduled auto scans and make sure the antivirus software is updated on a reoccurring basis. iPhones are the same way. You will generally find that you don't need antivirus on an iDevice because of how they are built. Now if you do jailbreak your phone, which I'm assuming that you aren't, then you probably want to consider antivirus depending on your needs. Android phones are a completely different story. It's like a whole 360 different story. Unfortunately, most Android antivirus apps have been researched to death and found to not be very consistent nor useful with their antivirus or malware scanning. While Google has been working on improving the security of Android phones, we continually see malware-ridden apps entering the Google Play Store. So my advice would be to use very strict judgment when downloading apps, only get them from the Play Store, and check app permissions when you download something. 
Seriously, a selfie app should not need access to your email, for example. Now, while apps like Saraha and Maytu are really fun and they're super cute, they may also come with a backdoor collecting information you don't want to share. And yes, I specifically mentioned those because both of them had weird permissions that were ousted this year. Much of the antivirus spectrum is debatable by folks in the tech community, so I tend to work with my own experiences and by reading recent research and data provided by experts. Use your best judgment when it comes to antivirus picks and always take it with a grain of salt. Now day seven is now complete, congratulations. Tomorrow we'll chat about browser security. But first, make sure to subscribe on YouTube and hit up snubsy.com for the downloadable checklist and to skip ahead on the 30 day security challenge if you want to. Again, I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you tomorrow for day eight.